Um, Megan was a type of kid who kept you on your toes. She was diagnosed with depression and attention deficit disorder in third grade. So many times when you have children who have ADD or ADHD, they are constantly on the move. Um, you're constantly, you know, they're 10 steps ahead of you. You're trying to stay close with that. Um, so it was a busy lifestyle, but it was good. Um, you know, my girls were great. We did a lot of things, you know, family vacations. Um, Megan was the type of child who always wanted to know about things. I mean, she was not a naive child. Um, Megan wanted, if she found out about something, she wanted to know how it was made, how it broke down. So um, things were great. Megan was uh, middle in middle school. Um, she had been bullied quite a bit, especially seventh grade was horrible for her. Um, boys stomped behind her in the lunch line, calling her a fat cow and an elephant, to the point that Megan stopped eating lunch. She, of course, didn't tell me about this because why would you tell a parent about this? I mean, it's embarrassing. Um, Megan was made fun of in gym, laughed at, called thunder thighs. Bottom line is Megan was miserable. Um, she cried every morning going to school, every evening coming home from school. She wanted to fit in, and Megan thought, if I fit in with that popular crowd, those girls, those boys aren't making fun of those girls, so maybe they'll accept me. Um, unfortunately, nothing Megan did would work. Megan didn't feel, even though Megan had friends, Megan still thought that that was her answer. Um, I used to tell her, Megan, you can't buy friendship. A friend is a friend through good and through bad, not just because you're giving them something or you can do something for them. But I was just a mom talking. I didn't understand what she went through every day. It was about three weeks in and she received a friend request from a boy named Josh Evans. And the friend request would come in and it would show a picture in the name. And Megan called me over to the computer excited, Mom, Mom, come look at this. I went and I looked and I said, okay, who is that? And she said, I don't know, Mom, he's hot. I said, well, Megan, I'm, I'm great, you think he's cute and all, but is he a friend of a friend or how do you know him? And she goes, Mom, I don't, he's hot, please let me at him. And I did let her at him and I told her, listen, if he says anything negative, anything sexual, he's deleted immediately. And believe me, um, since all of this has happened, I have had some negative comments from parents and even some questions from students of, why did you let Megan add this person? Why, why would you do that? She didn't know them. And the specific reason is, is that I was afraid, what if she went to a friend's house? What if she went somewhere else and she was able to get on and add them? What if she added them under her friend's account? Even though she didn't have the password, there are still ways. So I, one, wanted to let her know that I do trust her, but secondly, I had the controls to monitor it. And it was a Sunday night, October 15th of 2006, and she had filled out her birthday invitations. And it was late in the evening, and she said, hey, Mom, can I get on MySpace? I said, yeah, you can for a few minutes, so I signed her on. And she got a message from Josh that said, I don't want to be friends with you anymore. You're not a nice person. And Megan was confused. She was where is this coming from? What the heck? So she told me about it and I said, Meg, you know, respond. Maybe you had a bad day. Who knows? So she responded, what are you talking about? Where'd you get this from? But there was no response. So about a half an hour later, I called to check on her and Megan was crying. And I said, Meg, what's going on? And she said, mom, they're being horrible. They're saying horrible things to me. Said, Who? Who are you talking about? And she said, on MySpace. I said, Megan, are you still on MySpace? And she said, yes. And I said, Megan, get off the MySpace and I will be home. Probably 20 minutes went by and we were talking and I just got an absolute horrible feeling. I don't know how else to describe it throughout my whole body. And I took off running upstairs to Megan's room. I opened her door and I found her hanging in her closet. This is something really important that we have to start working on because technology is gonna go nowhere. So we have to make sure that we can get this out there for more people to understand that it's a something that kids deal with every single day 24/7